What's up, everybody? It's Marquise Goodwin here on Third and Longhorn. Don't forget to like and comment down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another interview edition of Third and Longhorn. Man, I'm pumped about this episode. Yep. We have a Longhorn legend in the house. Please welcome Marquise Goodwin. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Yes, Mr. Olympian. The yeah. Olympian. Now, Marquise, we always start this this show off the same way by asking. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we, got, we got to switch this up. I can already tell how this is going to go. I need to ask him first. <laughs> okay. Uh -oh. What's it like being the shortest person <laughs> uh, ever had on this podcast, bro? Whoa, History whoa. being made. That's Legendary long. Yeah. To, to, to answer yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I'm already uncomfortable. I think you better answer get... that question. Yeah. <laughs> like, can we just I'm get started here? <laughs> can we get... <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, uh, can we pan the camera down so we can see? Uh, Keith? Hold on, is Fozzie even Make here? Sure oh, okay. he's able to be seen in the shot. Hey, Fozzie, all the time. I almost stepped on him walking in the building. <laughs> oh my gosh, this crazy. is what my UT experience was like. Actually. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Couldn't this make one it the first time or the second time. Right. <laughs> Fozzie, you older than me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but you please. got more eligibility. Uh, let, me, <laughs> yeah, let me uh let me try to remember where we were on the on this episode. But we always start the, this this off the same way. What kind of how did you get to Texas and what brought you there? You were he obviously heavy, heavily recruited. I saw a list of about 10 schools, which is pretty much a who's who of of everywhere uh, of every school out and out of Rowlett, Texas. Why Austin, Texas? I chose Austin, Texas. On oh, first of all, honest to God for the opportunity. Thank you all for having me here. Yeah, oh, sure. Thank you, bro. Got to do that. <laughs> but uh, I chose Texas honestly because I knew what that shield, like the the power that it held. Mm -hmm. Coming from Raleigh, Texas, I grew up in a um, in a few different homes. I ran away when I was young, and I lived in <clears throat> four different other homes in high school. So. I took one visit, it was to UT. Like I came here, it wasn't even a real visit. I came for a game, went out. My Trevante Rhodes was my recruit, uh, my recruiting, uh, yeah, what do you call it? A host. A host. <laughs> and he kept my per diem. <laughs> like, <laughs> he kept my per diem. I need that back. I need that Run that it back. back. Tell him that you that need a, 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 what's that, bird box? You need a, you hey, need a royalty. I need, I need that need royalty. royalty. Yeah. yeah, bird box me. But, uh, um, Coming from Rowlett in a in a situation that I was in, I just couldn't wait to get out, honestly. Mm -hmm. And um, really having my first bed um, was when I came to UT. Mm -hmm. I just I had already committed to UT my junior year for a track scholarship. It wasn't even for football. Mm -hmm. I got here, walked on, and um, ended up having my own bed. Um, and then you know, I ended up playing football and running track. I did not know you were a walk on. Yes, sir. Yeah, no, yeah. Started. So wow. I literally I just remember that. Yeah, yeah. It was, we were in the same class, mm -hmm. class of 09, and whole class had finished that. We had signed the whole class, and I remember there was like word that we were getting one more guy, but nobody knew who it was. And it ended up being Marquise, a track guy. And I remember when he first got there, everybody kind of viewed him as like the track guy. Oh, yeah. But he used to bust heads in track <laughs> that first day. From day one, he I, was <laughs> busting people up, though. Yeah. So. I got I to gotta piggyback off of that yeah. because. Marquis first day coming in, the, the stigma about track guys is, oh, they run fast, mm -hmm. straight. So mm -hmm. true. So but true. Can they do anything else? Right. Yeah. And Marquis said wide receiver, we had seen previous track guys try to come in and, and play wide receiver or play running back. And it, it it didn't translate the same way. And I saw you for the first day. I went over and talked to Colt. I said, bruh, he he's special. Mm -hmm. Like this dude different. And the, and the thing that made it special was your hands, the way you caught the ball, it was so natural and fluid, and you didn't break stride. Like, yeah. you could run 4-2 and then still catch it wherever. It was like, I never seen Earl Thomas have to run as hard as he did and still not catch somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I never seen Christian Scott have to try to go all the way across the field and still not catch somebody. Like, those were two fast safeties that we had at UT, and you made it look so effortless. So I got to give you your flowers while you're here, but that very first day in the bubble with Coach, Seeing how you was tracking the ball, catching it, maneuvering, running full speed, dude, you could tell you you had something different about yourself, and you had something to prove considering that you mm -hmm. came on a track scholarship and showing up, just saying, "Hey, I'm here. I just want to play ball." Like 
Let me in. Straight yeah. up. Yeah. And what, what, what you was that, that door down. Yeah. What was it? Well, the, tell us about that experience of like coming in, like Oak just said, the 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 addition to the class, and then a walk on that's on a track scholarship with a track guy stigma yep. at UT. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like what was it? Was, that? It was so one on one, honestly. Like I already knew what it was. I was gonna be labeled a track guy. My accolades in track already had superseded my football accolades in high school. Mm-hmm. So everybody, nobody really even knew I played football. Mm. I was a national champion, world champion, mm-hmm. record holder, three-time world champion. You know, mm-hmm. like multi-time national champion in track and field. But I wasn't all state. Mm-hmm. You know, I was all district, all all area. Um, I got invited to the high school All American Bowl, but it was never nothing that stuck out because I, I've been running four two since I was like 15, 16. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Say that. Hey, hold, hold, right, hold, right, right, hold, hold on. Hold on. He just casually, casually said that. Right, no. like, for, right. for context, the, the, the new NFL record on the 40 yard dash at the NFL combine <laughs> is a 4 2 1. Yeah. And you've been saying you've been running a variation of close to that. Yeah. Since you were 15. I can believe that. Shout out to Worthy, man. Shout out to Worthy. I'm proud of you, man. You came in. You turned it all around. Did your thing. Humbled up. Got to the grind. Hella proud of you. I got to make that known. I ain't talked to you that much. I follow you like a mug. Mm. Keep your head down. Keep grinding. But we're going to have to run it for sure. (laughs) (laughs) People that don't know, know, his unofficial 40 time was 419, correct? Four four seventeen and four nineteen. Yeah. Four oh seventeen, oh four nineteen. What is other? I ain't looking. I ain't looking. Okay. So the crazy right. thing, if Ozzy said for people that don't know, and I'm like, I'm people. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I'm people. I did yeah, I, wow. yeah. I feel like Shaq. I was like, I, I apologize. I was not familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't familiar with your game. Right. Like, bro, you already running four. Right. Right. Well, right. let me let me ask you this, Keith. Since obviously you say you've been running four two since you was fifteen. Do you, is it ever frustrating like that your speed can sometimes overshadow your ability on the field? Mm. Yeah, it's really frustrating and more frustrating in the sense of I'm not taking a jab at anybody. I'm going into my 12th year in the league. I really don't care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been coached by but only two guys since I've been playing football, period, that knew how to coach a 4-2. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody always talking about, yeah, I just want you to run as fast as you can, and he's just gonna throw as far as he can. Cool. Well, if I do that, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm fastening his arm. Everybody ain't Pat Mahomes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you think that shit cool, but yeah. like, yeah. until you have to throw it. Yeah. 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 So, and especially if I'm not the first read, you right. know what I mean? Like, you you gonna throw to your six four, number mm-hmm. one. But, yeah. Um, I said that to say it's been frustrating in my career. Because my stats haven't quite shown the type of player I am or mm-hmm. how electric I can be. That's why I've been known as a big play guy mm-hmm. my whole career. But, uh, you know, stats are like bikinis. They show a lot, but they don't show everything. Mm-hmm. 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 He been reading my book. <laughs> he been reading my book. Does it, does that, has that affected you? So talking about running that same speed since you was 15, 16, has that affected you being the same height since you <laughs> No. I'm Actually, I, I'm that serious. <laughs> 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 He was just happy it's not his age today. No, I, thought he, I thought he was serious. I, know, I was like, all oh, leaning hey, in. Hey, camera, like, camera, can y'all see him over this? <laughs> oh, like, we're gonna, we're gonna can y'all get a pan on his back face? To back? Oh, <laughs> like, oh, can, can y'all see him behind that <laughs> mic? Have I don't you been know. that height <laughs> since you were 15? <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? No, the, th- the messed up thing is I have. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. I want to bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. So 4-2 since 15, get to college uh, on a walk-on. You walk on to yep. that 9 team that yep. goes, what What was that, 13-1? What was that, 12-1? Mm-hmm. Well, we, we win. Game. Yeah, undefeated yeah. to the last game. Undefeated the regular season, won the Big 12 championship. I would say... What I remember from that that season was one of your pivotal, two of your pivotal plays in the Texas OU game. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know what I had seen in practice to that point, mm-hmm. but what we always say is, can he, can he do it when it counts? Mm-hmm. And you proved to do it when it counts. I, I think that's when you really started Big to get play. the respect. I wasn't that, even supposed to be in on that play. What? Right. <laughs> True I wasn't, freshman. 
be, I wasn't even supposed to play that game for real. How True the, freshman okay. walk on. Mm-hmm. I hadn't started yep. any games before then. Mm-hmm. I had just had a blocked punt yep. versus Colorado the week before, right before yeah. which kind of like allowed me that another opportunity. Mm-hmm. B. Collins was supposed to be there. Mm. You remember BC. Brandon Collins? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a name. Yeah. Right. That dude. Oh, that's yeah. a name nice. right there. <laughs> but he, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. I was able to fill that position. I was just really just to fill a spot. I was running a simple slant. Right. Colt looked my way first. Boom. <laughs> Not Jordan Shipley, threw it to me. Yeah. Shook him off touchdown. Mm-hmm. And that's when my legacy at UT really began. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Coach knew what he had. He knew what he had. He, he, hey, from then on, like, <laughs> Coach started, hey, you coming to church with me? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's yeah, a good you, thing when, when, when your quarterback want to know what you're doing that weekend. Yeah, 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 what you got going on? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's Keith, a good thing. Uh, um, you, you talk about um, your being being able to be in a league and having some frustrating years here and there, not stats adding up. You you figured it out though. You you figured it out. Like mm-hmm. like that's a big deal. I mean, you going into your twelfth year in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I think right. that's a big, deal, especially your side. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how fast you're, but your side because NFL is a big man's game at the end of the day. Yes, and for you to figure it out. How did you figure out? Because a lot of people want to know. They want to know the secret. What did you get better at right. from college? Because right. I'm telling you right now, I don't. When you left um, University of Texas, you can't tell me everybody was signed up saying, "Oh, he's going to play 11 or 12 years." Mm-hmm. They maybe, just, maybe two, I three, know, right? Maybe so, make, is he going to make the team? So how right. how did Keys figure it out? Honestly, God went first. Mm. My wife. Getting married so young. Man. My wife, we were college team, college teammates at track, uh, college teammates at Texas. We ran track together. Formerly known as Morgan Snow, now Morgan Goodwin. Yeah, eight Shout years. Out. Mm-hmm. Shout out, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> Miss Goodwin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, really getting married to her and, and being with her kept me focused. It, it opened up a, a new level of focus for me. Like we were just dating in college, but got engaged. My second year in the league, and then we end up getting married the third year mm. or fourth year. And uh, it was truly a blessing for me. It, it flipped my whole mindset, like how I prepare, how I take care of my body. Um, it really elevated me as not only a player, but a, a man mm. That's all funny. around. So yeah. uh, kudos to my wife, man, for changing yeah. me for real. Mm. She made me a better player. I started to get more focused in my diet, like my craft, really working on being a receiver. I never wanted to play receiver. Really? Never, not ever wanted to play offense. I was a corner and safety. Oh, okay. I always, I tried to, Coach Akina tried to get me. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 right here. You're I the know. best DB I never <laughs> coached. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know. Right. That yeah. sounds about right. Akina <laughs> want all the guys. Yeah. 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 He wanted yeah. yeah. This is DB. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Coach Akina, you. Uh, nah, but, um, yeah, I never really wanted to play uh, receiver, but I just started honing in on on the little details and nuances of being a, a really, really good receiver. And um, that also helped me elevate my game. Now, you, you big on family, right? I've known Huge. you since you first came into UT. Went to the wedding, man. I've been there at all the steps, man. We, we, we like this. But Length. one thing that I've learned from you is the relationship that you have with your mom, relationship you got with your sister, as well, man, talk a little bit about what that's been like for you, yeah. the journey yeah. that you've been able to be with with them mm. and then how you've been able to open up doorways that maybe wouldn't have ever happened if mm-hmm. you weren't in the position that you were in, that God put you in. Man, that God put me in for sure. Um, for those of y'all who don't know, uh, I have a sister who was born with cerebral palsy, which is a muscular deficiency. Basically, she restricts, uh, suffers, not suffers, she lives with a lot of handicaps and restrictions um, due to uh, lack of oxygen in the brain at birth. And so she's 31, she wasn't, or 32, wasn't expected to live past seven months. Mm-hmm. That's, um, that's why nobody can put a number on you except mm-hmm. God. God only know that. Amen. So keep pushing no matter what you're going through. Just keep on pushing. The doctor might have gave you a date, but it's up to God. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But anything, whether it be that job, that raise, um, that baby, um, that dream career, it's coming. Mm. You just got to keep pushing, all right? Mm-hmm. But um, my mom, beautiful lady, beautiful soul. Mm-hmm. I know I said that <clears throat> I ran away 
It was only because of domestic violence that I was dealing with. <clears throat> and I haven't really publicly talked about it, but uh, it's cool. It needs to be talked about because people will look at me and be like, ah, he got it figured out. Or he been an Olympian. Mm -hmm. He's, he got drafted into the NFL. He's, he don't deal with regular people stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I was abused as a young boy, which forced me to run away. I was just, I would call myself a coward back then, but I, looking back then, I mean, looking in hindsight, I think I was smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, just to run away. Um, but um, me and my mom, we on great, great terms, great relationship. I was able to, I was afforded the opportunity to buy my mom a house in 2018. Mm -hmm. I got a contract That's extension, man. I, I grew up Section 8 housing, uh, any hood. I lived in every hood of damn near around Dallas. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just moved around. Um, and just to see that my mom has her own space, my sister had their own space, that they don't have to worry about um, governmental funding, <clears throat> any of those things all because of the opportunity that God blessed me with. My sister never walked a day in her life. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting choked up a little bit. You're good, bro. Sister never walked a day in her life, and yeah, God blessed me to play two sports professionally. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mm -hmm. And people always like, dang, well, why you still be running track? Well, why you still playing football? Like, you have <laughs> fans, you know, and people who care about me, but they just show it in different ways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really nice way to it's say it. <laughs> yeah. um, you only had five catches this year. With you, like, what you? Why are you still working out? Why? You, and I'm just like, you know, I just let it be yeah. because yeah. it ain't it, the conference call. It wasn't a conference call. You know what I'm saying? That calling wasn't for for them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, right. That was for, that was for me and my family. That was right. for me for real. Yeah. And the people that I want to share it with. So. Things that I used to like bark at, I don't even turn around at no more, you know. Um, but I'm grateful for where I'm at, where we headed. It's the off season. Yeah. I'm back in Austin, ready to, you know what I'm saying, see what this next next year holds. Uh, one thing that I was just thinking about is you, you were talking about, like, keep on pushing. And then you mentioned, like, the family facing the, 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 the baby. The, I know kind of what you and Morgan have gone through. Yeah. On on that side, and then uh, you established the Marquise Goodwin Foundation. Uh, to the extent that you want to share, talk to us a little bit about the Marquise Goodwin Foundation, what you guys do, and then you know where did that come from? Where did that desire come from? So it's still in the works, honestly, uh, with my foundation. Um, but I do a lot of work outside of my foundation. It's really a cumulative of things, or or people like coming together, me coming together with other people. So my, that's what my foundation is about right now. But I started as a contributor to the March of Dimes. I was born two, two months premature. My sister was born three months premature. Um, and my wife has also dealt with premature losses. Um, we, we've lost three babies together prematurely due to incompetent cervix, which she's cleared of now. We have three beautiful, brilliant yeah. little kids. Yeah. Yeah. Blessings. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm blessed for real. But we, we did suffer those losses. Um, never would have known, and unless it happened. And um, apparently, it's a big thing in the African American community with um, like incompetent cervix, and you don't find out until you find out mm -hmm. how we did. So, I'm just trying to be a voice and an advocate for people in, you know, the same situations that we have been in. Uh, we, my wife for a while basically had an outreach program to where a lot of people would reach out to her and to get solutions on how to cope with losing a baby or just, you know, deal with pregnancy issues as a whole. I've had NFL guys, um, past and present players reach out to me mm. and asked how, you know, I was able to make it through and I just help these guys cope along and give them the best advice I can and help everybody walk through. Um, with some of the tools that I used when I went through those things. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it's helped the people that it has. I know it has helped a few of them, but just looking to help as many people as we can. Yeah. Man, I, I, I love that. I'm going to jump in here real quick. Um, I love your story, man. Uh, I'm changing gears, but I, I, I love it. I, I love that, um, just to comment on this, I love uh, that people get to see, like, 
why you move the way you move. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's a big, big, you know, some people watch on TV or they, they meet you or they see all your success and they're like, oh, you know, you know, he's blessed. Boom, boom, boom. Man, you got an awesome story. I love that. So I, I get it. I get it even more now. Um, 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 you're big in your fraternity. Uh, we talk about Kappa Alpha Psi. Um, there's a lot of- Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Yeah, I know. I just want you to, so. I just want you to, you just gotta, you I, gotta I got get there right. I got you. Get there right. Yeah, you know. Uh, 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 <laughs> but I, I, I got a quick story about this. Uh, uh, we played y'all, I don't know when, I played for a while, so you, you, was, you was with the Bills or whatnot. Yep. And, uh, and I was telling them before the, cause they, what we play against in the league, it's a Texas guy. They're like, man, you know, ask me about this. Mm -hmm. They already know you super fast. And I'm, I'm telling. Them, I said, hey man, don't, don't let him, don't let him get a touchdown because he's gonna hit that shimmy yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling them, right? <laughs> we get to the game. I mean, it may be early on, first quarter, second quarter. <laughs> oh, yeah. it was in oh, Buffalo. Yeah, it was a post. Pull it up. I said, oh, they're gonna keep saying, oh, I'm running down the field. I'm like, no, no, DJ, you might want to hang it up. And then I'm like, I, I saw him do that. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to the sideline then. I'm like, I'm trying to act mad. I'm like, ooh, that'd be <laughs> Man, uh, I just, I just love the energy, just the energy uh, that you have when you score. It, it, you're very entertained, especially when you, you know, you know, doing a long job and mm -hmm. doing all that stuff. Uh, um, 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 what it is about the fraternity, Kappa Alpha Psi. Uh, fraternity, fraternity Incorporated. In, 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 incorporated. What about that uh, means, mean, what does that mean to you? Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated means so much to me. Um, my good brother here. Yes, sir. Sharpen me. Iron sharpens iron. It's one man sharpen another. And at ID, Iota Delta, we make them sharper. We, make them, we, we don't, don't make, make them at them all. At all. Mm -hmm. Look, he, listen. You know, so I listen, came, I made yeah, sharp. He got the chill. Hey, I just got the <laughs> He's saying something. He's saying something. Pay attention. For real. You know, and... um. Honestly, I'm a first generation college student, athlete, graduate, and a first to pledge mm, wow. sorority or fraternity. And so I didn't know anything going into pledging. Like I didn't know what it was about. I didn't know what it was for, but I'm really big on community service. Mm. I love serving my community and yeah. the people that I'm around. Mm -hmm. I majored in youth and community studies yeah, yeah. and kinesiology. So, um, having that sense of, or having a, a community, a group of guys who are as invested in community and, you know, other attributes that come along with being a part of the fraternity. Um, I've rubbed elbows with a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are doing this on a, you know, different, different scales, you know, as frat brothers mm -hmm. that I've gotten to meet that I wouldn't have met in any other circumstance. So I'm just grateful for uh, like the outreach that I've gained from that um, and the brotherhood that I've gained. I'm the oldest of 12, so I don't have any biological older siblings. So with fraternity, I have so many older brothers, like not a part of the fraternity, but my football fraternity, yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of the same in that sense, like when we just had, you know, one of the youngs leave, like it's just love. It's the same with with Kappa. Well, mm -hmm. let me uh, let me ask you this: staying on this subject because it's interesting. Uh, could you give us some insight on like the dynamic of trying to pledge to a fraternity mm -hmm. while still going through football? Because right. I remember and how you do that. and track. Because I remember being in the locker rooms and them boys pledge it, y'all you be high, bloodshot, red, So kind of give a little bit of insight on what that dynamic is like. Yeah, the dynamic is crazy. Um, really, it just takes discipline. That's really when I learned to be disciplined. Um, and that's kind of where the trajectory of my career started to take off because I had kind of like gotten a rhythm and learning how to be a professional at a young age. So um, my, my schedule was already aligned. Like most guys don't really just, you know, they give us the itinerary mm -hmm. on that Friday before the Saturday games. Mm -hmm. But I made our itinerary for the week because I had to know what I was doing each day, like each hour. Like, all right, it's going to take me 13 minutes to walk from Sea Lot to Dining Hall or Sea Lot to, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I was real calculated. I, became, I began to be real calculated because, and I think Kappa taught me that because mm -hmm. 
time constraints. I had to be at five places at once. Mm -hmm. How can I be at five places at once? Right. Yeah. Shit, I got to time it up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You just got to watch your time. You know what I'm saying? And, and that really helped me put everything in perspective. I still was able to have fun. I still was able to be a college athlete. I was an academic, all-American. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't miss out on any of those things. Mm -hmm. But it did teach me discipline, which mm -hmm. is something I think all young men and women need, especially in this day where everything is, is so instantly... Like you get instant gratification from everything. Mm -hmm. You don't really have to have a discipline to wait for anything. Mm -hmm. When we transferred back then, we used to have to sit that year out. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then you might not play where you're right. at. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's just like it's different times. So mm -hmm. well, Marquise, we like we get to interview a lot of people on here. And I think a lot a lot of times when Mark and I are doing a lot of the research on this, like we gotta like dig around the internet, right? You gotta find certain stuff on certain people. There's not a lot of stuff. We had no issue with you. You have, like, I mean, like, you, there's so much depth to your story, and I think it shows it shows about your your depth as a human. But I think there's a part of the story that I think a lot of the Texas fans like know of, but don't know a lot about. And I think that's the your you know Olympic side, your track side, mm -hmm. like this part. Can you kind of take us through that story about how you first realized you know you were good at this all the way to you know. London and the Olympics, et cetera. Can you kind of walk us through that? Of course. Yeah, I try to walk through it as fast as I can, honestly. <laughs> I knew I was the shit for real <laughs> in track. I mean, I've I've I was a I'm a really good football player, but in track I'm it was a different level. Talk it. I didn't have to rely on anybody. Like when it came to training, when it came to rehab, when it came to my performance, it's just me. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I okay, y'all have to leave three hours before. I'm gonna leave an hour before because that's just what I do. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, my success was not predicated on anybody else's, and I think that's why um, I love track so much. But to answer your question, um, I started running at uh, organ organized at nine years old. I was a state champion from then on. You was a state Every, champion from nine to the <laughs> until <laughs> until. 2009. <laughs> From 1999 to 2009. I don't want to interrupt his story. I'm just immediately, this is how I know I'm a father. Immediately, I thought, what about the rest of the kids? <laughs> and you like, they weren't giving participation. Like, ain't no right participation here. back then. So I'm like, well, just, imagine I'm growing up in the Marquise Goodwin era. Exactly. Nah. Everybody racing for second. Yeah, you know, that's right. what they yeah. yeah. like, like, all right, we get that well, red ribbon. <laughs> yeah. Get that red ribbon. <laughs> Yeah. You say get that red ribbon? Like, I don't even know what place that is. Right. <laughs> ah, okay, so a decade of dominance. Decade, decade and some, because yeah. when I came to college, um, Still hold it. freshman year, off rip, national champ. Um, took the year off after nationals and tried to do like more football off season. Try to up my chances. Mm -hmm. We went to the Natty the year before. Mm -hmm. You know what we supposed to be? We ended up going five and seven. <laughs> we supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave that out. Yeah. We went 12 and <laughs> yeah. one again. Ooh, that hurt. That hurt. <laughs> that hurt. But uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, y'all. <laughs> no, no, talk about the Olympics. Take us to the Olympics. Talk, yeah. talk about uh, training. Let's, go, let's get to the Olympics. Oh, yeah. training? Training for it. Training for, 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 for jumping, running too. Because Fazi, we were teammates. And so, you know, oh, like, I know. we were college football and track teammates. So, <laughs> Fazi, no, he was there around that time and training was crazy. I, for all you football players who think y'all fast and can run, I urge y'all strongly take your off season, take you a few weeks in the off season, go out there and get on that track. Mm. Let's see what you got. Run you six three hundreds and let's mm -hmm. see how that feel mm -hmm. Ooh, on the time six. with good technique. Repeat. Six three hundred. Get up no. to eight twelve. I no, mean, no, no, no. I got a forty yard sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Training was crazy, but uh, getting to the Olympics though that was the craziest sport experience I've ever had in my life. I've been to the Super Bowl and I've been to the Olympics, and I can honestly say Olympics is the Olympics trumped it, dog. Ooh, because the football football is it. You know. It's, just, it's like another game. I mean, but it's the Super Bowl, too. Right. I'm not trying to downplay the right. Super Bowl mm -hmm. right. at all. Yeah, right. The I love worldwide. We, yeah, we understand. The, world. The, tra yeah. the track was, it's a different level. Mm -hmm. And the the people in the stands want to be there. Yeah. yeah. It's not like 
a lot of billionaires in the stands at a Super Bowl yeah, yeah, yeah. who just sitting yeah. in their suites and shit, just looking down like, yeah. it's hey, it's live action. And, and it's the world. It's the world, bro. Global. You, I'm next to somebody. I got Ghana. Then I got Portugal. Yeah. And now I got uh, uh, Russia. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. China. Got all these different countries I'm competing against. And it's just you with the USA across your chest mm. and your, your name on your singlet. And you, you really, it's, it's you versus the what's world. The, what's that feeling like? Like, what was that feeling like? That feeling. You versus the world. That's right? crazy. That feeling. Imagine, I'm going to paint a picture. If you could imagine being in a UFC octagon with a lion. Hmm. <laughs> I was liking the picture at first. <laughs> <laughs> but then I was but you have any weapon that you want. Mm. Okay. Okay. It can be the scariest thing in the world. I just about or to say, it my can weapon, be the best thing in the world. If I a got a bazooka a and a lion in the I don't give a yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. boom, lion yeah, yeah. gone. <laughs> and half of the and half of the octagon. Right? <laughs> yeah. And that's how I feel. <laughs> Gotcha. I feel like I was right. the guy with the bazooka. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, You're going up against come, this. Like, Come on. Everybody yeah, yeah, else yeah. might have felt like they was in there with a lion with no weapon. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about your mindset. And I think Texas helped shape that, honestly. Absolutely. But how, how you, your height <laughs> able to let you jump <laughs> so far? <laughs> I thought he was no, being so serious. Serious. <laughs> so serious. Yeah. Like, force, force equals mass times acceleration. So there if, he is. if you put your that head. That went right over OK. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all got the same education? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, like, hold up. Where you going with this? Oak, Oak Star trying to look on DJ Notes. <laughs> My boy pull his phone on. He said, if you force your mass to accelerate, it, oh, okay. God. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, Keith, one of, one of the photos that I think went viral before that was even I mean this was before Instagram and all. I think I just seen it circulating on Twitter and it got like a gazillion likes it looked like you were flying I want to say it was at Worlds I'm not sure you remember the one I'm talking about I think I'm pretty sure what you're talking about it was Worlds or the Olympics yeah it was but like in that moment I think is when the world actually yeah. just paid yeah. attention yeah. to Marquise Goodwin not college football world not the track work, but the actual world. Because I remember how many people from Houston hit me up. Yeah. And it's like, bro, who is this? Yeah. So it was like, at that moment when you put the world on notice, like, what was that moment like for you? That was actually a huge moment because Twitter was like ramping up. Mm -hmm. And I was one of two college athletes at the time who had got verification badges, me and Barkley, mm. um, the quarterback. And he was at USC. And uh, so that's crazy that you say, like, when I came, when I like, really came on the scene, um, that helped push that narrative. And um, that jump would have won me the Olympic gold. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So just make sure it happens <laughs> when it's supposed to. But that jump would have actually won. Um, it's one of those that I wish I could get back, but I obviously can't. I. Honestly, this is the first time that I've talked about that without getting emotional because I've always been a track athlete. Right. Because everybody has told me that I'm a track athlete. So mm -hmm. I really believed I was a track athlete. So at that time, I felt so defeated, bro. Because- well, Wait, well, for the people that don't know, why, like, you gotta walk us through. Why did you feel defeated? I'm gonna get from, you there. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so defeated because I was the only person from that I knew from my community, from UT, mm -hmm. from my church, from my circle of friends, um, like outside of the track world, who had made it, who had made it that far or had did anything to the, that magnitude. So I felt like I had, I had to bring hardware home because I was representing more than just myself. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, and uh, when I scratched and I was told like the jump and what it could have been it was just like ah, because the day before I had won I would have won the Olympics I would have won a competition if, jump, it, if yeah. it was a one day comp yeah 
I jumped once the day before to qualify for the qualifiers. final. Yeah. And then the next day is that picture that you mentioned, I scratched. And I, I think Mac probably had y'all watching back mm -hmm. home. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We was all too. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, um, but y'all embraced me when I came back, and that made me feel love. Like, the first, the only thing I wanted to do getting off that, that plane coming back from London after the Olympics is just to get back and grind with y'all. Because mm. it's the only thing that could, like, make me feel better. Like, that was my coping me mechanism back then. I didn't have that much family at the time. Mm -hmm. I was young. Um, and I say it at the time. It's crazy I say that at the time because now, you know, obviously you have more family now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. How'd it happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was a cru crucial time. Yeah. Well, okay, no. uh, okay. Are you still on the uh, Olympic? Because oh, I was no, going to no, transition I was going to go back to, okay. to Texas stuff. Yeah, yeah. Ahead. I was going to say, let's uh, let's take it back to football a little bit. So you're the last of the Mohegans in the 2013 draft class. Just a little bit of background. It was KV, me, Keese, Jay Hills was training with us, mm -hmm. um, Chris Whaley, a couple guys. Yep. I did nine seasons, wanted to get 10, couldn't get it. It wasn't in the cards. You pushing 12, 12 seasons coming up. And I see teams like Buffalo, San Fran, Philadelphia, yep. Chicago, Seattle, the Browns. What was your best experience in mm. the league with mm. what team? Mm. My best experience, man, looking back, I want to say San Fran yeah. mm -hmm. because that's where I had my most success. That's where I kind of got a real opportunity in Kyle Shanahan. Shout, Shout out, out to him. Yeah. 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 You know, real quick, UT. Real quick, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I remember when it happened because we have the same agent, David, yes. and we was both free agents at the time. Yep. And you came off the board quick. Bro. Yeah, like, yeah, I know. First day, Kyle went out and got you. He got Kyle me. Shanahan went out and got Kyle you. Kyle got me. Yeah. And much love to Kyle, man. He sat in that same room that I did at UT. He played receiver at Texas. I think transferred from Duke or Trent. Yep. Yeah, transferred yeah. from Duke to UT. So he got, he bleed burnt orange, man, and it shows, man. Didn't have to give me a op. I had, um, in that 2017 season that I had with him, I ended up playing three years there, but in that 2017 season that he gave me the, the op, I had more, st I had better stats in that one season than I had in my whole career combined mm -hmm. up to that point. You know, and it's it's just a credit to him, man, just believing in me um, and my talent, my work ethic, and just me as a person. And um, yeah, so hella love to him forever. Um, but the best, I think, probably would have had to been Buffalo. They gave me my shot. Yeah. They changed my life, yeah. ultimately. Like, 31 other teams had that op, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And they didn't pull the trigger, and Buffalo did, so I'm forever grateful for the Bills. Mm -hmm. That organization, um, the fans there are electric. Yeah, right? I hear about those They jumping off the tables, time. burning tables, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the wings fire. Yeah, like, know the <laughs> I don't know about the winter. See, I ain't trying to go visit yeah. in the winter, but... Right. <laughs> But yeah, the Bills just for giving me the opportunity, but Kyle Shanahan, you know, yeah, him too. Yeah. Well, I want to take it back to your time at Texas, and I'm probably going to regret this once I open this thing up. <laughs> but uh, I want, let's talk about when you were on the team, who was the funniest person on the team? The funniest person on the team. Let him answer. <laughs> yeah, because I'm trying to think. I'm going through. I'm, I'm trying, trying to think of some. I went through. I went through the death chart myself. It's phases. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's phases. It depends on what level. Of, it's different levels of comedians. <laughs> yeah, intentional like, and unintentional. You got you got short humor like Fozzie. <laughs> <laughs> he, he he get right to it like quick to the point. <laughs> boom boom. That's why he's so quick on his feet. Yeah. <laughs> it don't take him. It don't take. It don't, he gotta be quick. He, he don't have that long to go. So yeah. that's, a quick step. that's called short humor. <laughs> That's one type. Okay. <laughs> and you got, I mean, Shockey was funny to oh, me. No, oh, Shockey, Shockey Brown. His funny was different, man. Right. I think he was funny because he wasn't trying to be funny. He was, he was just for real. intentional <laughs> funny. Him, people like him and Cody Johnson. Oh, I'm thinking of just gosh. UT. Yeah. Uh, DJ Monroe. I ain't gonna lie, Ben Wells got to be in there. Being ben funny. No. <laughs> yeah. ben, oh, uh, DJ, DJ had a different type of funny, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all. Y'all know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> now, D, yeah. D, DJ, DJ Monroe's stories were the, were the best thing I've ever heard. Get it's DJ like, Monroe yeah, on third yeah, and yeah, okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. Hashtag find DJ Monroe. <laughs> yeah. We, we got to find him. Man. Yeah, we got to put a missing person on DJ. <laughs> nah, um, Jay Hill's funny. 
I think we had a. It's hard to ju- choose just one. We all had. We all had some good times. We had some team. great time. Yeah. Who on the team kind of took you took you under your under their wing when you got there, and then fast forward to later in your career, who did you kind of these guys here? That's yep. why that's why I vibe with them. I don't really vibe with that many people, um, just because y'all like y'all know a little bit about my upbringing, moving from home to home, like being homeless. Is, I ain't got time to be worried about if you really got my back, if you're gonna be trying to stab it if I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? So the people who embraced me when I got here, that's who I vibe with. Mm-hmm. And that's who I love. Like DJ showed me love like super early. Yeah. And it's just been, I got chill saying it because it's just super, super love. I'm great. I think DJ was my first jersey exchange when I got to the league too. Yeah, it was. That was awesome. Nice. Him and then RG3 and then a Texas guy started and then ET. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So that's why I admire you so much, bro. Man, I appreciate that. I got to give you them flowers, bro. You played so long, bro, and you set the pace for us, bro. Big time. Let's give it up for DJ. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. No, oh, real talk. Oh, hey, yeah. baby. Yeah. You set the pace with fatherhood, bro. Like, got yeah. all the kids. Like, yeah, he do. Big family. <laughs> <laughs> real. Starting hey. five, baby. <laughs> he do got all the five. For real. He got, a, he got an NCAA tournament. <laughs> and they all, they, they, they they all, they all taller than Fozzie, too. Yeah. No. <laughs> Early on, early on, early on. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be quiet while I stick you under this mic. <laughs> well, was that, and as you got older, who did you kind of take under your wing at Texas? Really, I I mess with anybody who mess with me. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not the kind of guy that's gonna go out my way because I'm pretty flashy. Like, you see what I got on? <laughs> <laughs> and I want to make it known because people, people like I do this for me. It ain't for nobody else. No, that's like, real. That's I yours. buy this stuff for yeah, me. Right, like yeah, right. I don't care, but people think I'm flashy. No, I think I'm like just that. me. Yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying. I can say. I can say. I can. I can say that he. I can say that's true because I remember when we had the the team issue. <laughs> when, everybody got the same. Marquise would be in there like cutting his up, getting ready to do it. Like he been like he been doing that as long as from the Kenan Barber collection. <laughs> That's where he get his stuff from. That's why he got so many outfits, bro. Cause the bar, you get the Barbie thing right there. Oh. It's like six ninety nine. You say I shop half off. Perfect, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, man! Oh, man. We not gonna oh, make I'm it. I'm trying to keep this thing on the rails. Yeah. Man. We not gonna make it through this. Go, I got a question. <laughs> Please God, give me something. I ain't care. Yeah. I got a question for you. Um, <laughs> So, Marquise, you've been blessed with a lot of athletic talents, man. Man, um, super blessed. Track, football, you can, it seems like you can do it all. Just not height. <laughs> <laughs> We've had shorter. <laughs> <laughs> but looking back at your career, besides that scratch jump and missing out on that gold medal, which I know it hurts, yep. are there any other regrets in your career? Shoot, that wasn't even a regret. Okay. Because um, that's what God had aligned for me. Absolutely. I think if I would have made that jump, I never would have been an NFL player. Wow. Mm. And I never would have been able to buy my mom a house because, truth be told, track funds not the same as football. Wow, that's a good way that's to true. look at it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it was a blessing in disguise for me. Like, I never try to order my steps. I just just try to walk, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, God really blessed me, so I'm not even going to, I ain't even going to harp on it. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is, it, it happened the way it happened. Um, as far as in football, any things that I would, like, Maybe wish had went my way. Yeah. Uh, getting drafted first round. Okay. It would have gave me more respect as a football player, and I wouldn't have to do so much. If I wasn't, if I was a track dude, I would not be going into my twelfth year right. in the league. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. People just robots. They they re, they parrots. They right. repeat what they hear. You ain't even turn the tape on. Like mm. you can't run routes. You can't catch. Since when? Yeah, <laughs> they, cre- they creating right. their own. I'm pretty deer, efficient. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty efficient. Like, right. but I'm. I get like I'm gonna get fifty targets in a year. You only gonna see the ball thrown at me fifty times, and I'll probably catch thirty of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like just realistically, because most of my stuff is deep balls. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's hard to connect on those. So, I think me being a first rounder. Or even having like just a few more ops, like how I did in the bowl games, if it was mm-hmm. like in the regular season, mm-hmm. I think I would have had a better, a better career. But who's to say? I might have played five years and been done. You know what I mean? So my goal was to play 15 years, period. And That's still the goal? 
<laughs> I'm waiting to get back yeah. in these knees. I'm like, yeah. My 15. Kids trying to, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I'm just really trying to get the NFL to pay for this insurance for my kids. <laughs> so that's why I keep on playing. Nah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a, that's a part of it. It's a part. That's it's why I wanted to get the tickets. What they, say, what they say, the game within the game? The game within the game, give, man. Me that, give me that signal. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, what what's next for you, Marquise? If, uh, can you talk about that? Yeah, I can talk about All whatever. Right. Um, I run my world. I don't, I don't run by nobody else's rules, honestly, respectfully. Uh, and I say that respectfully because I don't want to be disrespectful to nobody. But I'm not going to wait up and not say nothing and not do nothing just to answer your question. But um, what's next for me? I'm just training right now. I'm a free agent. I just had another kid, Million. Congratulations. Thank Yo, you. Baby. Let's go, two baby. Boys, two boys, Marquise Jr., Million, and Murray, and, um, and my wife, Morgan. And we just... We thugging, we chilling, training, uh, do a little traveling. Um, I got some free agency visits, some calls that I've been having. Hopefully I can get in some warm weather. Uh, <laughs> these cold teams be warm me, but. <laughs> so, you know, LA, anywhere LA, Vegas, yeah, yeah. Miami. <gasps> You know what I'm saying? You did you recently did some some investing too here in Austin and oh, a couple gosh. different businesses. Oh uh, yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. What what uh here we go. What what is it? You know, so uh push him in the water. Uh, coming coming soon, uh we got a, a the grand opening of RSRV. Yo, reserve. It's a new one. It's the reserve. RS reserve. Let's go. Yes. Of course. Hey, yeah, the hottest the, the hottest prime spot yeah, for yeah, yeah. um young middle. Aged, old, whatever. Everybody. Come get it. Wine, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, vibes, mm -hmm. um, details on the Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jay Hills and I will be posting on our story today, actually. Little mm -hmm. <laughs> Jay. Well, I guess I will post it. We're gonna post, yeah. we gonna post every day. Yeah, two <laughs> yeah. timing for him. Yeah, third and long one got to post too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't we see why you. they wouldn't. We got yeah. you. Yeah. No, but we got that. Um, it's, we about to have our grand opening for the RSV RSRV Wine Bar. Come to Austin. It'll be the only one in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, only one of its kind. We got great uh, photo opportunities, great wine, great selections. We'll have great food in rotation and really, really good vibes. Um, so that's in Austin. Uh, we got a few other things popping off, but we're just going to wait until kind of get going. But, um, yeah, I really want y'all to come out and support RSRV when it drops yes. because it's Go. really going to be the vibe of Austin. I'll be there. Go. I'll be there. Go it's going yeah. yeah. to be real grown. Real grown. Yeah. Hold on, Marquise. Hold on, Marquise. When, I'm, when me and Kaylee try to come up in there and it's packed, yeah. we ain't got I a need, reservation. Need, yeah. Know. Am I going to be able to call yeah. and get in? Just call. Yeah. Just call. Yeah. Just call. Just I got you. We got it on film. I got you. I know what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, yeah, move them to the front of the line. They pay good. But if you say, hey, but if you say me, Kaylee, Nim. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nim. Leave no, my Nim. N-E-M. -E I don't know no. about Nim. Leave, leave, never leave Nim. Nim. Oh. Yeah. Nim. I love it. Oh, let me do this. I got one more question for you, Keith, okay. uh, before you get up out of here. Um, earlier in the interview, you kind of expressed the trauma that you grew up with between yeah. a little bit of domestic violence, yeah. um, the illnesses your sister faced, um, just that upbringing a little bit. How has that molded you into the man that you are today? Mm. Man, truly, I can say that all those experiences have made me so humble. Mm -hmm. I've been humbled by all of my transgressions. Mm -hmm. um, but I've really, um, God has blessed me with a, the, the mental capacity to use them as stepping stones instead of being roadblocks. Yeah. So I think it's really shaped me into the man I am by making me resilient, mm -hmm. made me stronger. Um, uh, and that's it. Keep it simply put. I've just it just made me resilient. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, Marquise, thank you so much for coming out, man. This has been awesome. It's That's been right. an honor to have you on the show. I know we were excited about this one. Yeah, uh, yeah. Man, we'd love to have you back sometime soon too. For sure, absolutely. It's thank all love. So Appreciate y'all having me. Appreciate you. Hey, on, history, man. baby, short as long. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> You number one, I'm two. I come in, hey, that's the only time I take second place. <laughs> First and shorthorn with Fozzie Whitaker. Oh.